Since the beginning of its time, the Catholic Church has faced a severe backlash from what they claim to be the forces of darkness. This notion lies in the fact that Jesus Christ throughout his time in the biblical history has been known to be the first exorcist. He was the first man of flesh and blood to have been able to cast out demons from the body of the possessed and it is believed that because he could do it, his followers too could perform an exorcism in his name. One would automatically assume that a devout Catholic might never then be confronted by the minions of Satan in their purest form, especially the leaders of the religion, highest in order being the saints, but history relates many cases in which a saint or a blessed has been forced to confront the devil, and has suffered physical torture. Sometimes, Satan has possessed their body, other times, he has vexed or obsessed them. Father Juan del Castillo, a 16th century Jesuit, blasphemed against his own will because he was obsessed by the devil. He would also strike or burn images of the Blessed Virgin. Mary Magdalene de Pizzi, who lived in the second half of the 16th century and was known for her ecstasies, left the choir on the night of the feast of Saint Andrew and ran into the kitchen to grab a knife and try to kill herself. On another occasion, fearing she might once again yield to that impulse, she had herself tied up. Blessed Egidius of Portugal, who loved science and necromancy, made a pact with the devil during one of his voyages. He renounced his faith with an abominable oath, and he sold his soul with a pact written with his own hand, and signed with his blood. Saint Colette of Corbe felt an instinctive revulsion towards ants. At the convent of Byzancon, the demons persecuted her, often filling the places she frequented and the things she liked, such as the oratory and her books with those bothersome little insects. Thousands of these bugs would gather, and would then disappear with the same speed with which they had appeared. Saint Nicholas of Tolentino, of the Hermits of Saint Augustine one evening, while at prayer in his oratory, saw the devil blow out the lamp, throw it to the ground, and smash it. He tells how the evil spirit set up residence on the roof of St. Nicholas Oratory, imitating the cries of various wild beasts, and turning over the tiles on the roof as if wanting to turn the entire thing upside down. The demon beat him fiercely and declared I am Belial, and I have been sent to you as a prod for your holiness. Apparently Saint Mother Teresa went through the same ordeal in the month of November 1996 when she was admitted to the Birla Hospital in Calcutta for her cardiac problems. The Archbishop of Calcutta Henry de Souza himself had been hospitalized at the same facility and shared the same doctor as Mother Teresa. He said he noticed that while Mother Teresa was calm during the day, at night she appeared extremely agitated. De Souza said Mother Teresa would pull off wires and other monitoring equipment stuck to her body. The doctors could simply not understand what made her do this. There was simply no medical explanation for her to behave this way when the night fell. He said that is when he believed Mother Teresa might be under the attack of the evil one. He offered to arrange for an exorcism for the elderly nun. She agreed. So he decided to do the prayer of exorcism over her. He called one of the priests who was a holy man in Calcutta, De Souza said. I told him, please say the prayer of exorcism over Mother Teresa. And he got a shock and said, shall I pray and should I drive out the devil if it's there? I said, yes, you do. But he says, what will the devil do to me? I said to him, you command the devil to go if he's there. 
In the name of the Church, as Archbishop, I command you to go and do it. After the exorcism was over, the Archbishop said Mother Teresa slept like a baby. He emphasized that other great religious leaders faced similar challenges, making her even more special. The Archbishop also corroborated earlier reports on CNN that Mother Teresa felt abandoned by God at times during her life. Those revelations were first made to CNN by Mother Teresa's closest confidant, Sister Nirmala, who now heads the order, Missionaries of Charity, established by Mother Teresa in 1950. This is part of the spiritual life of people, and God sometimes wants to unite the soul very closely to himself. He will allow them to feel abandoned by him. And Jesus also on the cross felt he was abandoned. In my soul, let them look up and see no longer me, but only Jesus. Stay with me, and then I shall begin to shine as you shine, so to shine as to be a light to others.